Analytical Chemistry 2.0 by David Harvey. Chapter 4. Section 4C. Propagation of Uncertainty. Suppose you dispense 20 milliliters of a reagent using the class A 10 milliliters pipeth whose calibration information is given in Table 4.9. If the volume and uncertainty for one use of the pipeth is 9.992 plus or minus 0.006 milliliters, what is the volume and uncertainty when we use the pipeth twice? As a first guess, we might simply add together the volume and the maximum uncertainty for each delivery, thus 9.992 plus 9.992 plus or minus 0.006 plus 0.006 is equal to 19.984 plus or minus 0.012 milliliters. It is easy to appreciate that combining uncertainties in this way overestimate the total uncertainty. Adding the uncertainty for the first delivery to that of the second delivery assumes that with each use the indeterminate error is in the same direction, and is as large as possible. At the other extreme, we might assume that the uncertainty for one delivery is positive, and the other is negative. If we subtract the maximum uncertainties for each delivery, 9.992 plus 9.992 plus or minus 0 0.006 minus 0 0.006 is equal to 19.984 plus or minus 0 0.000 milliliters, we clearly underestimate the total uncertainty. So what is the total uncertainty? From the previous discussion we know that the total uncertainty is greater than plus or minus 0 0.000 milliliters, and less than plus or minus 0.012 milliliters. To estimate the cumulative effect of multiple uncertainties we use the mathematical technique known as the propagation of uncertainty. Our treatment of the propagation of uncertainty is based on a few simple rules. Section 4C.1 A few symbols. A propagation of uncertainty allows us to estimate the uncertainty in a result from the uncertainties in the measurements used to calculate the result. For the equations in this section we represent the result with the symbol R and the measurements with the symbols A, B, and C. The corresponding uncertainties are UR, UA, UB and you see, we can define the uncertainties for A, B, and C using standard deviations, ranges, or tolerances, or any other measure of uncertainty, as long as we use the same form for all measurements. Section 4C.2 Uncertainty When adding or subtracting When adding or subtracting measurements we use their absolute uncertainties for a propagation of uncertainty. For example, if the result is given by the equation, R is equal to A plus B minus C, then the absolute uncertainty in R is UR is equal to the square root of UA squared plus UB squared plus UC squared. Section 4C.3 Uncertainty When multiplying or dividing When multiplying or dividing measurements we use the relative uncertainties for a propagation of uncertainty. For example, if the result is given by the equation R is equal to A times B all over C, then the relative uncertainty in R is UR over R is equal to the square root of UA over A squared plus UB over B squared plus UC over C squared. Section 4C.4 Uncertainty for mixed operations. Many chemical calculations involve a combination of adding and subtracting, and multiply and dividing. As shown in the following example, we can calculate uncertainty by treating each operation separately using equation 4.6 and equation 4.7 as needed. Section 4C.5 Uncertainty for other mathematical functions Many other mathematical operations are common in analytical chemistry, including powers, roots, and logarithms. Table 4.10 provides equations for propagating uncertainty for some of these functions. Section 4C.6 Is calculating uncertainty actually useful? Given the effort it takes to calculate uncertainty, it is worth asking whether such calculations are useful. The short answer is yes. Let us consider three examples of how we can use a propagation of uncertainty to help guide the development of an analytical method.
One reason for completing the propagation of uncertainty is that we can compare our estimate of the uncertainty to that obtained experimentally. For example, to determine the mass of a penny we measure mass twice. Once to tear the balance at 0 0.000 grams, and once to measure the penny as mass. If the uncertainty for measuring mass is plus or minus 0 0.001 grams, then we estimate the uncertainty in measuring masses. The uncertainty of the mass is equal to the square root of 0 0.001 squared plus 0 0.001 squared, which is equal to 0 0.0014 grams. If we measure a penny as mass several times and obtain a standard deviation of plus or minus 0 0.050 grams, then we have evidence that our measurement process is out of control. Knowing this, we can identify and correct the problem. We also can use propagation of uncertainty to help us decide how to improve an analytical method as uncertainty. An example for point 7, for instance, we calculated an analyte S concentration as 126 plus or minus 2 ppm, which is a percent uncertainty of 1.6%. Suppose we want to decrease the percent uncertainty to no more than 0.8%. How might we accomplish this? Looking back at the calculation, we see that the concentration S relative uncertainty is determined by the relative uncertainty in the measured signal. Corrected for the reagent blank. 0 0.028 over 23.41 equals 0 0.0012 or 0.12% and the relative uncertainty in the method S sensitivity, Ka, 0 0.003 ppm to the minus 1 over 0.186 ppm to the minus 1 is equal to 0.016 or 1.6 percent. Of these terms, the uncertainty in the method S sensitivity dominates the overall uncertainty. Improving the signal S uncertainty will not improve the overall uncertainty of the analysis. To achieve an overall uncertainty of 0.8 percent, we must improve the uncertainty in Ka to plus or minus 0.0015 ppm to the minus 1. Finally, we can use a propagation of uncertainty to determine which of several procedures provides the smallest uncertainty. When diluting a stock solution there are usually several different combinations of volumetric glassware that will give the same final concentration. For instance, we can dilute a stock solution by a factor of 10 using a 10 ml pipette and a 100 ml volumetric flask, or by using a 25 ml pipette and a 250 ml volumetric flask. We also can accomplish the same dilution in two steps using a 50 ml pipette and 100 ml volumetric flask for the first dilution, and a 10 ml pipette and a 50 ml volumetric flask for the second dilution. The overall uncertainty in the final concentration, and therefore the best option for the dilution, depends on the uncertainty of the transfer pipettes and volumetric flasks. As shown below, we can use the tolerance values for volumetric glassware to determine the optimum dilution strategy.